When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. We glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. I understand that um, there weren't enough bulletins, um, so if you could share with someone, if you're a couple and you can share, um, and maybe could pass one to someone who doesn't have one, that would be helpful. Okay. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory. We remember before you today our brother Ted. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion on our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
first lesson is taken from 2 Timothy chapter 4, and this is the text that I'm basing my homily on. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I invite you to read Psalm 23 with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. Thanks be to God. Dear friends in Christ, on behalf of Samuel Lutheran Church, um, I want to be the first to extend my deepest sympathy to you, Gary and Mike and your family. Your dad was a strong supporter of our church and we will miss him. Ted lived a life of hard work and faithfulness. He tried his best to be his best in his endeavors. And that's why I thought the verse from 2 Timothy was fitting. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And he did just that for almost 95 years. When Ted grew up in Muskegon in the 1920s, things were considerably different here. There was still lots of farmland and agriculture. Industry had not yet taken over. He loved the land, and especially pheasant hunting. Nothing made him happier than going out for a day to hunt pheasants. Unfortunately, as times changed, there were no longer uh, so many opportunities to do that locally. So eventually he had to go north to do so. When he was 85 years old, Gary took him on a trip to South Dakota to hunt. And I understand it was a wonderful trip. There's some great pictures uh, in, the, in the narthex there for you to look at. Ted was raised in the Christian Reformed Church, and my sense is that it was a pretty strict upbringing. Again, things were different then. He was the youngest of three children, and uh, as we were looking at the pictures, um, we noticed, I was noticing his little legs on the baby picture there, um, and that he, he looks like he's wearing a dress. So I'm sure that was what they did with little children at that time, but um, anyway. Um, he graduated from Muskegon High School and then worked for the Civilian Conservation Corps during the Great Depression. One of the things he was most proud of was serving his country. And I think he served from 1943 to 1945. And by that time, the war was winding down and he was not sent overseas. He went to officer candidate school and became a medical supply officer. He was presented with an award by the veterans um, for his service just a few weeks before he died. And again, there's a picture of that in Poppin House that you can see. Upon coming home, he worked as an apprentice machinist at Brickner and Krupp. And here's an interesting story. The person he apprenticed for introduced him to his stepdaughter, Alice Cooper. And they were married then on July 14, 1945. Many years later, after Alice passed, the same man's granddaughter introduced him to Dee Johnson small world. 
So my question is, and I suppose you've gotten this before, Mike and Gary, what was it like to have Alice Cooper for your mother? <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> Ted loved Alice very much. Just last week I asked him to tell me about her, and he just smiled and kind of stared off into space, remembering. After they were married, they began to run Alice's family's business, Cooper's Florist. I'm assuming Ted took that over, and I guess some people in the Heights even called him Mr. Cooper, you know, assuming that the name was the same. He did the flowers for all the friends, the proms and weddings and other events. He was well-loved in the Heights in those days. The only breaks in their busy life was going up to some property that they owned in Baldwin, in that area. They would pack up the kids and the dogs and head north. Ted loved to trout fish. And sometimes he would run up just for the day if it was raining, because he said that the, the browns came up the river then. Life was good on Peck Street, Mike told me. The family lived just a few blocks from the store, and Mike and Gary had their run of the neighborhood. They played football and baseball. They were sometimes probably chasing each other, as boys do. Mike remembers getting a bicycle, or they both got bicycles, I guess, for Christmas one year, and he remembers, since it was Michigan, riding it around the in the basement around the octopus-type furnace in the basement until the weather became better. They had wonderful family reunions in the summer, and the boys remember Christmas parties at the clocks. Dale's mother and Alice were cousins. There were Swedish dinners and presents, lots of fond memories of childhood. Ted was a good father. The only thing they were told not to do was to cross the street from the store. The reason why? There were two motorcycle shops there. So of course, they did cross the street. And I think some of you know the rest of that story. Ted and Alice raised their children here at Samuel taught them faith in Jesus Christ. You can find their confirmation pictures hung outside in the, in the lobby there. Ted served on the church council for many years. After retirement, he learned to play golf, and he really loved the game. Um, played with his friend, Harry Holm. And even into their 80s, for Harry, probably 90s, um, they were still enjoying the game. When Alice later got cancer, Ted faithfully took care of her at home until she died. In 1971, he married Dee. And I always love that studio picture in their home. Dee is wearing red, and uh, they both are sitting on the floor. I think Ted was certainly more nimble then. <laughs> and, um, they're both just gazing into each other's eyes with delight. And I just no I noticed that picture was at uh, Poppin House, too. When I first came to Samuel, Dee and Ted were here almost every week. Dee always had a pretty outfit on, and they were very supportive of my ministry. They also very much enjoyed Jennifer's voice, and so we're grateful that Jennifer could get away from her her day job and be here today. One of the best parts of being married to Dee was her large family. They made him part of the family, too, and loved, and Ted loved being Grandpa Ted to all the grandchildren. Dee's children have been very good to him. Ted was serious about his faith. There were times when he wanted me to just stop by and talk. 
He was troubled when things were not going well, and he regretted his sins. I came to assure him of God's forgiveness and love. It was a privilege to be his pastor and his friend. And the boys told me yesterday how much my visits meant to him. And I am honored. I know Ted could be difficult at times, grumpy and gruff, but I really never experienced that with him. He always treated me with respect. After Dee passed away, he would try to have coffee or tea for me when I came, and I really appreciated his efforts. In this last month, he made the courageous decision not to be placed on a feeding tube because he couldn't swallow anymore. He took responsibility and did not deny death because he knew where he was going. I know that one of the younger people in the family, I don't know if it was a granddaughter, a grandniece, and her husband, had some deep faith talks with Ted, and that that meant a lot to him. He was trying to find more joy in the little things in life and in his faith. While Ted was faithful until the end, he also knew that it was not what he did that saved him. He trusted in God's faithfulness to him, given in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. He indeed knew that it was by God's grace alone that he would gain that crown of righteousness in heaven. And I think he had a little vision of that the last time I came to visit him. It was the day before he died. And he was so happy. Just smiles and more smiles, which was not always Ted. He talked about seeing children playing and how wonderful everything was. I think in his mind, or what he was seeing, there might have been either a family reunion or a baseball game. He said something about getting, getting a score on the board. <laughs> but there was a sense of pure joy about him. So I read with him from the book of Revelations, where we talk about a new Jerusalem coming down from heaven and the old earth passing away. And in the center was the Lamb of God, Jesus, on the throne. And there would be no more mourning or crying or tears. It was good to be able to leave him in peace that day. So today we commend James Theodore Ankeny to God's eternal love and care. God has been faithful, watching out for him all these years, and he will continue to do so into eternity. We give thanks to God for Ted's commitment and integrity throughout his life, and we ask God to receive him in glory. Amen.
God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the peace of God, let us pray. God of mercy, Lord of life, you have made us in your image to reflect your truth and light. We give you thanks for Ted, for the grace and mercy received from you, for all that was good in his life, for the memories we treasure today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You promised eternal life to those who believe. Remember your servant Ted and bring all who rest in Christ into the fullness of your reign, where sins have been forgiven and death is no more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your mighty power brings joy out of grief and life out of death. Look in mercy on all who mourn. Give us patient faith in times of sorrow. Strengthen us with the knowledge of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are tender toward your children, and your mercy is over all your works. Heal the memories of hurt and failure. Give us grace to use wisely our time here on earth, to turn to Christ and follow in his steps in the way that leads to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death, our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death and by his resurrection opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, shall be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. not in 
to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory Let us commend Ted to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Ted Ankeny. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen.
Now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. people, you know, go downstairs. Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's right. 